Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Fab. Um, okay, our T Golai House group early in this morning's service. Um, this week we've been looking at chapter eight, I believe, of the Everyday Supernatural book, which is on the theme of prophecy. Um, as it's the first Sunday of Advent, um, as a group, we've considered it fitting that we could look at the role of prophecy in the Christmas story. Any excuse to fit Christmas in, really. Um, lots of us have already got our jumpers on, and Mason has been showing off his, and Claire's got her Christmas um, slippers on too. Okay, so um, Advent is a season of preparation and waiting for the celebration of the arrival of Jesus' birth. Um, the word Advent literally means coming, um, and in the Old Testament, there are loads of prophecies which predict the coming of Jesus as the Messiah. Um, I'm always blown away by the Old Testament prophecies because they're so, so accurate. Um, and they were written hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. Um, so it always blows my mind slightly. Um, but these prophecies that show that God's word is true and that he keeps his promises, which is amazing. Uh, as I'm reading my Bible, which is brilliant. And this Bible is a very special Bible to me uh, just because is the one that my dad gave to me in 1993. Yes, I'm very old. Um, but um, I remember back in 2008, I was helping the youth ministry uh, in Cowbridge, not far from here. Uh, and, uh, and I knew that my visa was coming to an end and I was panicking. I was very concerned uh, and very anxious about what's going to happen to you now, Raf. Um, not knowing at the time that God had, had a specific an amazing plan for me here in Kafili with Gateway. Uh, but I remember on that night, about two o'clock in the morning, God and the Holy Spirit really led me to go and grab your Portuguese Bible, Raf. And as I went to get it, I saw this bookmark in it uh, from uh, a chapter in the Bible that I used to read so many times, many years ago. And God brought me back to that message. Uh, in Matthew uh, chapter six, uh, from verse 25 to 34, but I just want to read the, the one that God really spoke to me, which was on verse 33. Seek my kingdom and my righteousness first, Raphael, and all these other things I will be giving to you. So God on that evening was reminding me, was speaking to me once again, Raphael, don't worry about the other things. Seek me, my kingdom and seek my righteousness and all these other things I will be uh, added to your life. So that's one of the ways that God spoke to me. In our midweek group this week, we were just encouraged to pray for each other and um, ask for a word of knowledge or, um, you know, just some form of encouragement. Um, so this week I prayed pray for a specific person um, and then I had a bible verse um, sort of enter my head when I was praying. I wasn't sure if that meant anything to that person or you know whether it was just something randomly that, that had just appeared to me that I'd read previously or anything. Um, so I sort of you know sat on it for a little bit um, and then I asked God just to reaffirm if it was for somebody. Um, so I just kept having that verse again and again in my mind. Um, so when it came to sort of our, our group night, um, I felt confident enough to share it. Um, still a little bit unsure, but I did share it with that person. Um, and it turned out that they'd actually had that verse on their mind for the last few weeks. Um, so that just kind of reaffirmed to me that God, you know, did put that on my heart. And because it was just an encouragement to that person, um, I'm glad I felt confident to step out and trust God and, and just speak my mind on it. And the So there's been a few times in my life where um, I've really felt God speak to me. Um, so I'll just give you one example today. I remember um, the church gateway, we were doing some sermons on gifts of the Holy Spirit and really encouraging the fellowship to try and uh, use those gifts. Um, so there was a lot of messages on the WhatsApp group, uh, people with encouraging words or pictures for other people. So I remember praying really hard for something because I really wanted to share and encourage someone as well and I remember having this picture and 
I didn't have like an interpretation for it, it was just the picture and it seemed really random. Um, so I was really hesitant about sharing it because there was always this feeling of um, disappointment if you know if no one reacted to it and also the kind of hesitancy of is this from the god or is it just something I've kind of made up in my head so I, I really wasn't sure about sharing it without an interpretation but it kept coming back to me and back to me and in the end I thought right I definitely need to share this now so I did eventually share it on the whatsapp group but then no one really responded to it saying yeah I think that's for me or I think I, I understand what that means um, so I was kind of discouraged at the time and kind of put off from sharing anything um, quite recently after that then so I remember afterwards uh, it was one of a church service in uh, in Gateway down, down the school and um, right at the end of the service someone approached me and said um, Josh, I didn't want to like say on, on WhatsApp or anything at the time, but I think that was for me and I think that's what this means and, and thank you for sharing it. So um, I was really encouraged by that and it just goes to show that, you know, you might not see um, the immediate results as well and just not to be discouraged by sharing stuff. And I just remember after that, I was, I was really encouraged that, um, that someone else was encouraged, but also that, um, you know, I, I, I shared something and it was actually from God as well. The weekend that my divorce came through, I read Psalm 139 and it speaks of no matter what's going on, no matter how dark things can get, it doesn't matter the, the darkest depths, God's always there. And it reminded me that there is nowhere I can go, nothing I can go through, that God's love can't follow me. For me, that spoke into my situation at the time and encouraged me and God continues to do that through his word. After we talked about prophecy at our house group on Thursday night, we um, prayed that we'd have a word for someone in the church. Um, the next morning I woke up and as clear as day, had a picture and a word for someone in my head, but it wasn't for someone at church, it was for someone at work. Um, I've never had anything like that before. Um, I've never had a word for somebody that isn't in a church setting, so it was a bit daunting for me. Um, but I sent a message to that person just saying, Look, I've had this, have had this thing come into my head, and I think it's a sign. Um, I think it's an encouragement for you. Um, and they received it really well, and it was really good news. One of the greatest ways that God has spoken to me is through providing opportunities. There's a lot of times when He will make it clear that He has something for us to do by making a way for it to be done. When I was coming to Wales, for example, initially, in the process, I was scared because it's not just an easy decision to make on a whim. So I thought, if God wants me to do it, then it will happen. I will go through the process, I'll start it, and if I get approved and I go through, then God made that happen. And as the pandemic started to happen, it became less and less likely that I'd ever actually get to come here. But then it happened anyway, and as you can see, I'm here right now. Um, and I, I just think that it's really cool that God doesn't always, it doesn't always have to be with words that God speaks to us, or an idea or an image, but through an opportunity that He puts in front of you in your life to take it, especially when it seems impossible, you know God was in it. Morning, everybody. I just want to thank our group for, for sharing those experiences. And I just want to just quickly pray and just say thank you, Lord, for all the amazing experiences we've already had. And just pray that through the service today that uh, we continue to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I hope you recognize throughout the, the video, we were trying to weave through uh, one of my favorite Christmas songs. I'm not going to apologize. Uh, Mary, did you know? And it was really deliberate because it's actually Mary who we're going to have a look at today. 
So you're probably thinking, why? Why, why are we going to look at Mary when we're looking at um, the Everyday Supernatural book and looking at prophecy? Well, linking back to what Rian said earlier, um, Advent is a time of looking forward to the birth of Jesus, um, and we're also looking um, at the second coming. So it's kind of looking back, I suppose, for us and looking forward. And this got me thinking about the Old Testament, and Rian's already mentioned really, um, about all the Old Testament prophecies um, that were made about the birth of Jesus. In fact, there were 44 prophecies um, made in the Old Testament about the birth of Jesus. And that kind of got me thinking again, that actually none of those prophecies would have come true if it wasn't for um, the willingness and obedience of one person to actually listen to God. And that was Mary. So I'm going to challenge you today and over the next week as we as we look deeper into prophecy in our groups to kind of use Mary as a role model for listening to God and hearing from God. Um, and what I want to spend a little bit of time in a moment doing is just looking at why we should use her as a role model. But I'd like to um, just start with some of the Bible readings for today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to be reading from Isaiah 7, 14, the Old Testament prophecy about Mary. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The New Testament fulfillment of this is in Luke 1, 26 to 38. And it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Thanks, Racine. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off by looking at that Old Testament prophecy. Now, I'm sure most people know Isaiah was a prophet who lived... 700 years before Jesus. But I want, what I want to think about is, I wonder what the people thought when he shared that prophecy. I wonder um, the question how, or why, or when. I wonder um, what they thought as time started to go on and nothing was happening. There wasn't any sort of sign. I wonder were they discouraged? Or did it give them hope for the future? Did they just hold on to that thought? And I just wondered to start off with, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever heard from God and then not seen the results. Maybe um, you've had a word for, for your church and you haven't seen it come into fruition yet. So I just want to start with an encouragement to, to be patient, to maybe write it down. I can see Anne Williams on my screen. I know she does this. Um, write it down, pray over it, and then may it bring you hope in troubled times. But what I want to focus on today is the, the New Testament reading in Luke. Now, I know it's part of the Christmas story, but being a biology teacher, this had to happen at least nine months before Jesus' birth. So I think I'm safe to, to talk about this. So please forgive me, okay? But Mary, um, what an amazing woman. I mean, she was probably only 13 or 14 years old at the time this happened. Um, from a tiny, really insignificant town, um, Jewish faith really probably a lowly peasant status, working throughout the day, very, very busy. Um, probably not literate, but she would have heard the, the, the Old Testament uh, through the reading of scripture. And I'm not, you know, historically accurate with all of these, I'm sure, but I just kind of get a picture of who she was. And I wonder what she thought of that Old Testament prophecy. Now, 
I don't know, I teach a lot of 13, 14 year old girls. And, and if she was anything like the ones I teach, I can't imagine she spent a long time sitting around going, oh, I wonder if it's going to be me. Um, she's probably more preoccupied at this time with her upcoming nuptials to Joseph. So what I want to look at today is Mary's responses um, to hearing from God. And I'm going to use the song, the title of that song, which is Mary, Did You Know, to kind of introduce us. My first point, Mary, did you know that God was speaking to you? Because I think when we look at this passage, she wasn't quite certain. Okay, in verse 28, it says, God sent an angel to her. Now, I don't know about you, but um, if you were going about your business and suddenly an angel appears, and it is always suddenly with angels, isn't it? Every time we read about an angel, it's suddenly an angel appeared. Um, I, I would think that you would think, oh, something is going on here. But it, it describes in 29, Mary didn't freak out at this angel. She didn't like run scared. She merely says, it merely, said, it merely says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words. So she acknowledged she was there and wondered what kind of greeting this was. Um, I just wonder, did she recognize that that angel was from God? Or did she say, uh oh, what have I done? Um, and then I was thinking, how does this link back to the book that we've been looking at, The Everyday Supernatural? So I'm not sure that any of us here would class seeing an angel as everyday. Um, it does say in the book that one of the ways we can see and um, we can hear from God is through um, visions and visitations. And so the point I want to make about this is even Mary, the mother of Jesus, wondered about this message. Is it okay to wonder about hearing from God? Is it okay to question, is this from God? And the book says this, when God gives us a prophecy, he has given us an invitation to come closer to fully understand a prophecy, we often need to ask questions and ponder the application with him. So yeah, I think, you know, Mary kind of shows us and the, and the book reinforces that in fact, I would say it's actually good practice to think and ask yourself, is this message from God? If Mary wondered what, or when she had an, you know, what was being said when she had an angel stood in front of her, then I think it gives us permission to wonder too. My second point, I think is Mary, did you know what God's message meant? Now in verse 30 to 33, I'm not gonna read it again. We've heard it this morning. The angel gives Mary the message. Um, now again, I love Mary's response. I don't know, there's an old um, hymn or Christmas song. It says, Mary, Mary, meek and mild. I don't think Mary was meek and mild to be able to question an angel. Um, she says, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Um, so Mary questions what God is going, to, uh, what God says is going to happen. And how often do we do this when we hear from God? Really, God, you want me to do this? How can, how can I do that? How can this even happen? I can't do that. How is this even possible? And the book tells us again that that's okay. And actually, this is part of the process. So sometimes we need to ask, Lord, what do you mean by this revelation? In other words, what's the interpretation? I just love Mary's boldness. And maybe um, when I was looking at this, rather than it demonstrating her lack of faith, it actually reflects her relationship with the father because maybe in fact she's, she's saying, so God, how are you gonna do this? Rather than how is this possible? And yeah, I think it's just worth noting as well that the, Mary do, uh, that the angel doesn't chastise her for asking the question. He doesn't tell her off. He doesn't get frustrated with her. He actually supports her and he actually shows her um, or talks to her about her cousin Elizabeth. And he uses that and as an example to boost her faith. He says, look at your cousin Elizabeth. She's had a baby. Look at what God has done for her. So he kind of um, just affirms her, you know, her faith by giving her a real life example that she would have known about. So on to my third point, um, Mary, did you know what to do next? So. Mary was really obedient, and, and she says this in, a fine, in the final verse we listen to. She says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. But she doesn't run out into the streets going, I've been chosen to be the mother of God, you know, of mother of Jesus. She doesn't go run into Joseph. She actually goes straight to her cousin Elizabeth's house. 
um, where she shares that experience. She's nurtured and she stays there for three months. And the book, when we were reading it, it, it warns us about asking and waiting for the right time to share when we've heard from God. And I think this has really big implications in this Christmas story, because if Mary had run straight to Joseph at that time and told him what had happened, we could have had a really different outcome. If Mary had gone to Joseph and told him, it wouldn't have given God that time to speak to him and prepare his heart for his role in that prophecy. And so I think it, was, it, was, it wasn't a coincidence Mary went off um, to be with her cousin Elizabeth there to save time for the other people involved in that prophecy to be prepared. Um, the book says this, we also need to think carefully about application. So often we get into trouble because we don't ask the Lord how we can apply a prophetic word. It can be helpful to ask the Lord, do you want me to say this now and how do you want me to say it? And I think um, Mary demonstrates that in, in what she did there. I've got written here, Mary's willingness to listen to God fulfills the Old Testament prophecy we heard earlier, but it also allowed another 43 prophecies to be fulfilled and ultimately allowed us a relationship with God through Jesus's sacrifice on the cross. So my final thought to leave you with, Mary, did you know the impact of your listening and obedience to God? When Mary received that message from the angel, did she really know the impact that her actions would have on the rest of the world for the rest of eternity until Jesus came again? So I think my encouragement to leave you with is listen to God, follow the guidance he has given to us, but then step out in faith. You are never going to be asked to be the mother of Jesus, but God can and will do something amazing with you that may have greater impact than you realize. So go for it. And just a quote I read about Mary, um, just to finish with, because I really liked this. It says, as events unfolded around her, often to her surprise, and God can come to us and it can be a surprise, she had to figure out continually what God was asking of her. She looked for the word of God in people and events listened to that word, pondered on it, and then acted on it. And that's what I want to leave you with today. And the crushing, and the pressing. Thank you.